um, Revelation 3 verse 14, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Yes. I don't really see how that proves that Jesus is um, created because if we look at the Bible um, surely we read in the Bible that Jehovah is the creator Jehovah creates all alone and by myself Isaiah 44 24 but then in the New Testament doesn't the Bible teach or or am I mistaken that the Father creates through the Son 1 Corinthians 8 6 and Hebrews 1 2 talks about the Father or God in Hebrews 1, 1, but it must be Father because it talks about his Son in verse 2. So the Father is the source of the creation, yes. not the Son, not the Holy Spirit, but the Father creates through the Son, 1 Corinthians 8, 6 and Hebrews 1, 2. Um, yes. Elsewhere we read about the Holy Spirit creating, and the Holy Spirit is called the power of God. So many people would assume that creation is out of the Father, it's through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. But just focusing on the Son, the Son is not the one which creation is out of. Creation is out of the Father. Yeah. But it's then through the Son. And so is it possible that Revelation 3.14 is simply saying that Christ witnesses the creation um, because he's the beginning of that creation. In other words, he's the one who the Father created all things through, you see. That, that would be how, how I would understand it, James. Yes, yes. Yes, so, so you mentioned in your text that you, you, you find it difficult to understand that Christ is actually a created being. Um, so do you understand Revelation to, to teach them that Christ is actually the creator himself well i'm the i'm not a, the creation yeah i i beg your pardon i didn't mean to interrupt you james no no it's okay um is that your understanding of what revelation 3 teaches that uh, that jesus is actually the originator of the creation rather, rather than created himself uh, I'm not a Jehovah's Witness. When I used to go to church, I don't anymore. It was an evangelical church. Um, I would see Christ here in Revelation 3.14. It says that Christ is the true witness. He's the faithful and true witness. The yes. beginning of the creation of God. Now when it says of right. God, that's um, I found out that that's a genitive singular. And it's simply saying that the the, the creation comes up out of the Father. Perhaps I shouldn't have said up out of. I should just say out of. Um, because in 1 Corinthians 8, 6, the preposition ek is used in the Greek, out of. And it says that creation is ek, out of the Father. And then it's die, dear in the genitive sense. It's through the Son. So Father and Son are both involved in the creation. I won't complicate it by talking about the Holy Spirit. But... It is the creation of God, meaning Father, because the creation is out of the Father. Creation is not out of the Son. Creation is not out of the Holy Spirit. Creation is through the Son. It's out of the Father and through the Son. So Jesus Christ, the Son, is able to witness the creation because he's, he's, the, he's the creator. He's the one who the Father made all things through. At least that would be the way that I would see it. Yes, well, the understanding we have from the scriptures is that uh, not only from Revelation 3.14, but from other scriptures too, is that um, Jesus was the first one created by Jehovah. And then he was used by Jehovah to, um, in, in some way that we don't understand, to create all other things. Um, as you say, uh, Jehovah created all other things through him. The scriptures do say that. Um, well, I, I can't was. think of any scriptures that, that say that. Uh, with respect, I must base, base my faith upon what the Bible says, not what I'm told. I've spoken to yeah. many people over the last few years of the lockdown, Christadelphians, Seventh-day Adventists, Mormons, Muslims. They can't all be right because they're all saying mm. different things. 
I have to base my faith upon what the Bible says, not a, yes. not upon what I'm told. Um, yes. If you can't show me a verse that says that Jesus is the first created thing, then I'm not going to accept that. But I will no. accept that if you can show me that from the Bible, although I was right. hoping we would focus on Revelation 3.14. Mm -hmm. um, as for Jesus creating all other things, there's no text of the Bible that says that. Um, the Greek, the Greek text at, at, at Colossians one sixteen, does not include the word "other," which is a loss in Greek. Yeah. So all of the Bibles, New King James, King James, NIV, New American Standard, all of these Bibles, they simply say at Colossians um, one sixteen that. Well, I have to, have, have to actually read the verse. It simply says that um, Christ made all things. It doesn't say Christ made all other things because that's not in the Greek text. Could we focus on Revelation 3.14 as that's what I've really been looking at quite yes. intently. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I was doing some research on it. Um, the original Greek uses the word arche, A-R-K-H-E, I think it is. Um, for the beginning, meaning the beginning of the creation of God. Um, and uh, according to the research I've done, that, that word beginning um, does not mean the authorship of creation, but it means the first one um, created. This is talking about uh, the... Um, the, the uh, the start of the creation. Um, do you by know? God. Yes. Do you, do you know how many times RK is used in the Book of Revelation by John? Um, not a hand, no. no. Um, it's used four times. Mm -hmm. So, okay. it would be best to look at all of those occurrences of RK and see how they're used. Um, mm -hmm. For instance. But Revelation 1.8 is used of the Almighty God. You would obviously believe the Almighty God is Jehovah, yes? Right, yes. yes. Uh -huh. um, I'll read the verse, James. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, that's RK, and the end, says the Lord who is, who was, who is to come, the Almighty. So the Almighty right. is called the beginning and the ending, RK, yep. If, as you say, RK always means created, because that's how you interpreted it, the use of RK in Revelation 3.14, where I think it's talking, uh, if you interpret it that way, then you must also interpret this word RK in the same sense at Revelation 1.8, which would mean that Jehovah is created. The Almighty God is created because he's called R.K. at the beginning. Okay, I see what you mean, yes. And there are other occurrences as well of R.K. There's another, there's another two. Um, I think we do have to be uh, a little bit careful. Um, uh -huh. R.K. is used in Revelation 21.6. And he said to me, it is done, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning, RK, and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him, to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. So I think we can agree that it's Jehovah who's talking here, the Alpha okay. and the Omega, yeah. But Jehovah's called the beginning and the end. And beginning is RK. So once again, if RK always means created, then this would mean that Jehovah is created. Well, um, I've just got a bit of a reference here from uh, um, some study notes I've been checking up. Um, Revelation 3.14, the son is called the beginning of God's creation.
creation, that's the revised standard version, the origin of God's creation, an American translation, or the beginning of the creation of God, the authorised version. Many argue that this means that the Son was the originator or author of the creation, but that is not what the text says. But that's what almost everybody in church history for 2,000 years has taught, including the people, I'm just an ordinary person, I, I tried New, New Testament Greek, and I wasn't clever enough to do it. I, I gave up after Wenham chapter 13, I think. Um, but um, which was which was disappointing. Um, but at least I did try uh, yeah. four four times. <laughs> I okay. failed four no, times. I was well. very I was no, very no, persistent. No, no. <laughs> Every year at university, I I decided to do um, a New Testament Greek course, and I I tried for four years. Um, right. <laughs> Um, but, um, but just to everyone in that, Robert, it does have to say that um, even some Trinitarians admit that such an explanation is wrong. It quotes Albert Barnes, theologian, regarding the Greek word translated beginning or origin. He says that the word properly refers to the commencement of a thing, not its authorship, and it denotes properly primacy in time and primacy in rank but not primacy in the sense of causing anything to exist. Primacy in not rank? Therefore. Yes. Prim Pardon? Can I just in interrupt? Primacy in rank would be mm -hmm. how the NIV translates this, that he is the ruler of God's creation. Yes. So that's what Albert Barnes yes. would be saying there. He would be mm -hmm. arguing that actually this means that Christ is the ruler of God's creation because he's primacy in rank. Which yes. which page number are you quoting from the Albert Barnes commentary? Or are you page quoting one, from Watchtower literature, not Albert Barnes? Page, page 1569. 1569 of the Albert Barnes commentary, is that right? Barnes notes on the New Testament. Barnes notes on the New Testament. Okay, yeah. you're not quoting from Watchtower literature that's quoting Barnes? Or um, are you? Well, I'm quoting the March 15th, 1975 Watchtower, which itself quotes Barnes' notes on yes. the New Testament, yeah. Yes. Um, some, some, some Bible translations, um, such as the NIV, very, very few, translate Revelation 3.14 that Christ is the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. And that would be what yeah, Albert Barnes yeah. is alluding to there. But the vast majority don't read that way. They would talk yeah. about Christ being the beginning of the creation of God because Christ is the source of the creation. It's not saying Christ is created. Um, I think we have to understand um, that this letter is to the Laodicean church. Yes, it's one of seven letters. And in the book of Colossians, Paul instructs that his letter to Colossae be sent to Laodicea. He says that at Colossians chapter 4, verse 16. Yes, he does. Yeah. And Paul does that for a reason, because mm -hmm. obviously the defects and the weaknesses in the Laodicean church were obviously in the Colossian church, which is why Paul said, read this letter after you've read it in Colossae, send it to Laodicea and let them read it too, mm. because they had the same errors. Now, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically the first thing that Paul teaches in Colossians is that Christ is the creator. Yes, it, 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 yeah, that is what you mentioned earlier in Colossians 1, isn't it? Um, um, do you mind if I go there? I'm just turning Please. it up now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, now, I have tried to do some research on this, and I'm not a Greek scholar. I do have a book that gives me the tenses of the Greek, but I've got a thousand books, and I don't know where it is. I moved flat last year, and I still haven't sorted things out, so I can't find it. And unfortunately, I don't know, um, I don't go to church myself, and uh, you know, I don't know anyone who could help me. But I believe that the verbs in Colossians 16 and 17 that talk about Christ as the creator, I believe they're in the passive voice, not the active voice. I could be wrong about this. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they're passive. Okay. Now, the reason why they're passive is that Christ is the creator, but it is 
but creation is out of the Father. It's not out of the Son. Yeah. We're back to 1 Corinthians 8, 8, 8, 6, which I'll just read briefly if I might, please. I don't wish to jump mm -hmm. around, I do apologise. Um, 1 Corinthians 8, 6, it talks about idols at the start of chapter 8, and it says an idol is nothing, there are many gods and many lords, and obviously the context there is false gods, false lords, idols. And then in verse 6, yet for us there is only one God the Father, of whom are all things, of whom is ek, out of. And we for him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, that's die, dear in the genitive form, we live. So creation is not out of the Son, creation is not out of the Holy Spirit, creation is out of the Father, and it's through the Son. I won't mention the Holy Spirit to keep it simple. Well, it's not simple, it's fairly complicated. I think that would explain why we have the verbs in the passive form in Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Paul is saying that Christ is the creator, but creation being out of the Father, Paul wishes to stress creation is not out of the Son. It's through uh -huh. the sun. So the creation primarily comes first from the Father, but then through the Son, and then through the Holy Spirit. Or in the power of the Holy Spirit, I should yeah. say. Now, if I read Colossians 1, 16 and 17, it clearly states that Christ is the creator. And as I say, I haven't been able to check up. Are the verbs passive, not active? I think they are, but I'm not 100% and I could be incorrect. Notice that the word other is not in the Greek text. I went to jw.org and, and I looked up the kingdom interlinear translation and the word other, a loss in the Greek, is not in the Greek text. So no, the text does not that. say by him all yeah. other things were created. It doesn't say mm -hmm. other. No. no, that's just added to complete the sense. Um, but uh, Colossians 1 that speaks about Jesus as the firstborn of all creation. Well, can, can I read so, 16 and... All right, you want to... I was going to read 16 and 17, but do you want to look at... Do you want right. to look at firstborn, James? Uh, well, that expression in verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, because by means of him all things were created in the heavens and on the earth. So the firstborn of all creation... That would indicate he had the beginning. No, no, no. Firstborn does not mean first created. Firstborn is prototokos. First created is protokiskos. So the text does not say that Christ is... I can't find... It. Obviously, Christ's human body was created 2,000 years ago in Mary's womb. I, I obviously believe Christ's humanity was created. Uh -huh. But in his deity, he's uncreated. He's eternally existed sharing the Father's nature for all eternity and would be uncreated. Firstborn does not mean first created. First created is protokiskos and it's never applied to Christ anywhere in the Bible. Firstborn means preeminent. It has a similar meaning to Revelation 3.14. Um, David is called the youngest son of Jesse in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 14. But yet King David is firstborn. Psalm 89, 27. Well, how can the youngest son be the firstborn son? And it refers to status, to being preeminent. Um, Ephraim and Manasseh were twins. Manasseh came out of the womb first. He's called firstborn in Genesis 41, 51. But due to sin, he lost his right of primogenitor. He lost his birthright which went to his brother Ephraim, which is why Ephraim is called firstborn at Jeremiah 31.9. And there are lots of occurrences like that in the Bible, where firstborn refers to rank, position, status. It doesn't mean first created. That's a different Greek word. I'll give you one more example. Israel is called firstborn in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. But Israel all two or three million members of Israel didn't pop out of a woman's womb all at the same time in an instant. So when it says Israel is my firstborn, it means Israel is preeminent amongst the nations. 
it refers to rank, position, status. It does not mean that Christ is created. If you believe that Christ is a created being, I'm willing to listen, but you need to prove it to me from the Bible. You need to show me a verse that says Christ is created or, or something similar to that. I, I, I can't accept, you know, with respect to you, sir, I can't expect a, Bibli a, a teaching on the Bible unless it's proven from the Bible. No, quite. Could, could I read 16 and 17? Look Sorry. at the expression of firstborn, and um, whether it means um, the first in rank or, 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 or literally the firstborn, still indicates a, 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 a beginning, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. No. Um, there was a time when a firstborn was not in existence. Otherwise, why would the expression born be used? Well, there was a time when everything except for God, didn't have an existence. The word firstborn, as I've shown you, David is the youngest son of Jesse, 1 Samuel 17, 14, but he's called firstborn in Psalm 89, 27, because firstborn in that context means rank, status, position. He was the one that Messiah was going to come through. He was the chosen mm -hmm. king of Israel. So he was Jesse's youngest son, but he was the one who had the birthright that the Messiah was going to come through he was firstborn yes. because it's position status mm -hmm. rank um, mm -hmm. Ephraim and Manasseh Manasseh was firstborn when he popped out yes. of the womb before his twin brother Genesis uh -huh. 41 51 but he sinned he he lost his birthright the right of primogenitor and so his um, twin brother Ephraim became the firstborn at Jeremiah 31 9 how can you have twins and the Bible calls both of them the firstborn? No twin comes out of the womb at the same time. They, One comes out of the birth canal before the other. Um, I think that if, if the Bible... Spoken, spoken of in the scriptures as a representative of the whole ten tribe nation of Israel, aren't they? Sorry, can you say that again? Ephraim in the scriptures is, is used to represent the whole ten tribe nation and sometimes to represent the whole nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. So when the scriptures say Ephraim was the firstborn, mm -hmm. um, it would be referring to the whole nation as God's people um, as opposed to other children that uh, um, were descended from Abraham. Yes. So that's how I would understand that, that expression or to one tribe over another tribe, but that was because Manasseh lost his right of as, as firstborn son. The right of firstborn went to went to Ephraim. Well, there's nothing in the scriptures that I can remember that indicates what, what why Manasseh lost his, his position. Um, the scriptures don't indicate that he sinned in any particular way. Um, Reuben certainly did, you know, the first, yes. firstborn son of Jacob. Yes. But anyway, that's kind of irrelevant in a way. But um, I, I, I think that if you believe that Jesus is the first created being, you need to show a verse that says that. And, you know, with respect, looking at Revelation 3.14, I don't think it says that. Um, I think it's talking about Christ as the witness of the creation because although it's the creation of God, meaning Father, Christ is the witness of the creation because he's the one who the Father uh, made the creation through. Right. And again, if the verbs are passive in Colossians 1.16, that would explain why they're passive. Creation is out of the Father, not out of the Holy Spirit. Creation uh -huh. is not out of the Son, it's out of the Father. But then the Father creates through the Son, and that's why the Son is, is, is said to be creator. But I think the verbs are passive. I'll just I'll just read it. Um, Colossians one sixteen. For by him all things were created, that are in heaven. It's actually heavens, and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him, that's Jesus, all things consist, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. Well, firstborn from the dead can only mean preeminent. 
because mm-hmm. you don't go back into your mother's womb die go back into your mother's womb and then as a dead person she gives birth to you a second time firstborn from the dead obviously means the preeminent amongst those who've died that in all things he may have the preeminence so i would see colossians 1 16 and 17 as just stating that christ is the creator and seeing that paul told the colossian church in chapter 4 verse 16 to send this epistle to the Laodiceans obviously as Christ as the creator is the first thing that Paul talks about the preeminence of Christ the superiority of Christ and Christ as the creator if this was the mistake and the error that the Colossians were making it was probably the same mistake that the Laodiceans were making too which is why I'll read the verse Paul asked that the epistle be sent to them Um, Now, when this epistle is read amongst you, see that it is read also in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea, which has been lost, of course. So I see, if you put these two verses together, Revelation 3.14 and Colossians 1.16 and 17, is it a reasonable assumption of me to make that Christ is the one through whom the father created and what what revelation um 314 is actually saying is that christ is the faithful and true witness of the creation because he is the beginning of the creation he's the one who made the creation we read that in colossians 1 16 and 17 he's the creation of god it's the creation of God because God is the source of that creation, not the Son, not the Holy Spirit. Right. Can, can you see my sort of reasoning, James? I'm, yes, I'm trying yes, to be I logical can, about this. Yes, I can, I can, I can see the, uh, your reasoning, yes. Uh-huh. Um, the, the, um, the point that uh, Albert Barnes goes on to make, um, there's no seriousness says that. Uh, if it were demonstrated from other sources that Christ was in fact a created being and the first that God had made, it cannot be denied that this language of Revelation 3.14 would appropriately, appropriately express that fact. Um, w- w- where are you reading so, from? Are you reading from Albert Barnes or from the Watchtower? Because Barnes was a fervent... Tin- Albert Barnes was a fervent Trinitarian. He was not yes. an Arian, he was not a Unitarian. No, no, mm-hmm. that's right. He is a Trinitarian, yes. No, it's just from the same notes. Um, so what, what he was from the Watchtower. Here, but, uh, You're reading from um, the 1975 Watchtower. Yeah, but it's, it's quoting from directly from Barnes notes. But um, sometimes the say, quotation is not accurate. Sometimes an ellipsis is used. That's a series of dots, and bits are missed out to change the meaning of what the quote is saying. That happens quite a lot in um, people who quote from religious books. They use right. constant ellipses, dots, and they miss out bits that they don't like. And they sort of weave, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You put bits together that you like, and the other bits that you don't like, you just get rid of them. So you have a big long quote, and you reduce it in length by half, you use dots, and you cut out the bits you don't like and you keep the bits you do like and then you change the total meaning of what the text is actually saying what, could you just give me the reference to that watchtower article again i, I will look it up when we finished i'll i'll write down the reference uh, james uh, okay it's march 15 1975 um the article is entitled a, a grand spokesman who is he and what page number is it? It doesn't actually give the page number. Um, right. But that's March 15th, 1970. Right. That's the title of the article, The Grand right. Spokesman, who is he? Okay. Um, quite, quite extensive from Albert Barnes. Yeah. Yes. Because you weren't able to give the page number, that's how I, I knew it wasn't a direct quotation. It was a quotation from a, a secondary source. Um, but that's that's fine. Thank you. I mean, the person who wrote revelation john 
also wrote the Gospel of John. Yeah. And in the Gospel of John, um, he uses the word arche of both the Father and the Son in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, that's arche, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, if RK means you have an origin, right, and I don't think it, I think it can mean that in certain circumstances, um, uh -huh. but not in every circumstances. If RK always means beginning, then that would mean that the Father and the Son had a beginning. In other words, Jehovah, the Father, had a beginning. Because RK is applied to both the Father and the Son in John 1.1. 1, 1. And that would contradict what we read in verse 3. Let me just check something. Let me check I'm not. Uh, I want to see if RK is used again in verse 2. Let me just have a quick check. I'm sorry to slow things down. I do apologise. John. Right. RK is 746 in Strong's. It's used in John 1 1. And it's also used in John 1 2. So it's used twice. And then we read in verse 3 that all things were made through the Son. Which wouldn't make any logical sense let's just let's just read it john 1 1 in the beginning was the word beginning is rk and the word was with god and the word was god so if, if rk means beginning that that would mean that the father and the son had a beginning according to what you're saying Verse 2, he was in the beginning, that's R.K. again, with God. And then in verse 3, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. So the Son is the creator of all things. But we know that Yahweh God creates all alone and by myself, Isaiah 44, 24. It says that, that Jehovah creates, quote, all alone and by myself. So if the Son is... Um, so if the Son is the creator in John 1.3, wouldn't that mean, wouldn't that mean that, I'm sorry, I'm just feeling a little bit tired, I'll, I'll hand over to you, I've just completely lost the thread of my thought. No, sorry. no, you're okay, no, um, wouldn't that mean that Jesus and Jehovah are the same? Um, and that's how many people understand John 1, uh, 1 to 3. Um, They're modalists, yes. They believe yeah. that Jesus is God the because Father. That, that expression of the word was with God and the word was God, that's been the subject of a lot of uh, discussion, of course. Um, many, many Bible translations read differently, of course. Um, some read that the word was with God and the word was divine. Um, the New World Translation reads, as you know, the word was a God, which, um, which many people take exception to. But um, the, the, uh, as I understand it, the, uh, um, the, the grammar in the Greek um, does not say that uh, the word was the same one as the one he was with. Uh, the, word, the word was with God, who theos. But there's no definite article before the second God. Um, in other words, Scripture is saying that uh, um, as many, trans many translators and uh, commentators acknowledge that um, the Word was um, of a God-like nature rather than the Creator, the, 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 the God who created all things. And that's true because Sorry, could you just, that, you said, God. you said God created all things. Could you just explain that? Are you saying that the word is not the creator? Because we read in verse 3, all things were created through him. That's the word of verse 1. And without him, yeah. nothing was made that was made. So the word definitely is the creator. Well, the, the word was with God. Um, 
understand to be Jesus was not the same as the God with whom uh, with whom he was. How could you be with someone I'm not a modalist. who be the same person as that I one? am not a modalist. I reject the claim that Jesus is the same person as God the Father. That's one reason why I left the Evangelical Church in 2010. Although many of these people claim to be Trinitarian and they'll stick something that I would agree with on the website saying we believe in the Trinity, three persons and so on. In practice, many evangelicals are now um, modalists. They don't actually affirm the Trinity. So I reject as heresy the claim that Jesus is God the Father. Um, obviously, in John 1.1, 1, 1, Jesus cannot be the Father um, because John uses the article ho to distinguish God from the Word. So the Father is ho theos and the Word is theos without the article. And he does that so we don't make the error of thinking that the Word, it, that, that Jesus is the Father. They're clearly distinguished, and they're eternally distinguished persons in John 1.1. 1, 1. Um, I wouldn't make a big deal about the article, because um, um, we find that the article, um, God with the article, Theos with the article, is applied to the Father in one place of the Bible, and Theos without the article is applied to the Father in another place. Uh, and the same thing with Jesus. Jesus is called God with the article, and he's called God without the article. For instance, Jesus is called Hotheos in John twenty twenty eight, my Lord and my God. Hotheos. Um, so, you know, the, the reason for this in John 1, 1 is so that we don't make the error of thinking that Jesus and the Father are the same person. That's a heresy known as modalism. Um, but in, 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 in verse 3, would you agree that all things were made through the Logos? And it has through, because the Father is the source of that creation, but he creates through the Son. And I, I go back to, um, I need more pens, I'm putting pens in my Bible so I can mark various places. Um, uh, Revelation 3.14 these things say the Amen, Jesus, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, it is a genitive, so it has to be translated of God. Uh, I think it's, it's to Theu, of God. Um, so, Christ is the witness of this creation, but Christ is not the... Originally, he's, Christ is not the one that creation comes out of. Creation is out of the Father and it's through the Son. So the Son is involved in the creation, but creation is out of the Father, not out of the Son, not out of the Holy Spirit. And that's why I think Revelation 3.14 reads the way, way it does. Um, okay. Right, okay. Well, thank you. Well, there's quite a few uh, um, uh, references, I suppose. We, we, we could go on for a long time, you know, quoting various references. You've obviously learned, done a lot of research on this, Robert. You know, oh, yes. I must commend you for that. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, you've probably learned even perhaps more than I have recently, anyway. Um, so I'm getting a little down, mate. We perhaps don't study as a fellow as we as we might do, I've done lots of study in years gone by. Um, but um, uh, for, for myself, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they're not perfect, you know, on uh, teaching the truth from the scriptures, and uh, uh, I'm not going to change from that, you know. Um, uh, and I appreciate the point you're making, that you want to see um, evidence from the Bible, and you're quite right to do that. So I understand the Bible to teach that uh, Jesus was um, the Son of God, and uh, thus uh, created, just as the Son um, uh, is different from the Father, and there was a time when the Son didn't exist. Um, and the very fact that the Bible uses the analogy of Father and Son would indicate uh, superiority and an infinite 
Um, Actually, a um, father and a son share the same nature. You know, mm -hmm. you can't have a father that's a, a goat and a son that's a, a rabbit. You uh -huh. know, father and son would always share the same nature. So that's why I think God chose to use those terms, even though yeah. God is not a literal father and he's not a literal son in a human sexual sense. No, no, quite. Um, yeah. um, I have been at this for quite some time and I'm finding it difficult yeah. to concentrate, I'm afraid. I didn't get much sleep last night. <laughs> And I appreciate you speaking to me, James. Thank you. Could I just ask you, though, before you go, what would convince you that Jesus um, shares his father's nature eternally? In other words, that Jesus is the almighty God. What would I have to show you to convince you of that? Yes. Um, and not just one scripture, but uh, um, the, the witness from the entire um, scriptural account about Jesus and his yes. relationship with his father and what he taught himself. Um, and this is what, uh, um, as you say, you know, the Bible's own testimony. Um, would you mind if I just showed you three verses that I found which perhaps relate to what you've just said? May I do that? Okay. Yeah, Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. I'm going to read this to prove that Jesus is the first and the last. So it says, And I fell, and, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death, Hades and death. Um, who is the one who was dead and now lives forevermore, who the Bible calls the first and the last? Well, that's obviously Jesus Christ. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we agree in that. If we go to Revelation 22, 12 and 13, we'll find the phrase first and the last again. Now, this must be a reference to Jesus, because in verse 12 it says, I am coming quickly. All right. And in verse 21, the very last verse, sorry, this, uh, 20, the penultimate verse in the Bible it says that this one who is coming quickly, even so come Lord Jesus. So what, what I'm going to read has to be about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the first and the last. He says, I, Jesus, in verse 16. And there's no change of context. So because it says, I am coming quickly, and then he identifies himself as I, Jesus, in verse 16. And then the writer of Revelation, John, says, even so, come Lord Jesus. I think it's a slam dunk that what we're going to read in verse 12 and 13 is a reference to Jesus Christ, yeah? So I'll just read it. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. Now listen to this. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Um, first, I'm sorry, I'm finding it really difficult. I didn't get much sleep last night. First, okay. yeah. I, I think I said earlier, beginning was RK. Did I say that? I need to, I need to check this up in an interlinear. Um, I want to just establish that Jesus is the first and the last. He is the beginning and the end, and he's the Alpha and the Omega. Well, this expression, the Alpha and the Omega, is, uh, is shared um, by Jehovah and Jesus. We understand that the Alpha and the Omega are verses 12 and 13 to apply to Jehovah God um, in, this, in this context. Um, Why does... It's not, 
Well, it's entirely just... clear from the from the scriptural account, you know, who, who, who it refers to. But it could it could refer to Jehovah as well as to Jesus. What did the words "I Jesus" mean in verse sixteen? Uh huh. That's right. I mean, there's no change in context. And behold, I am coming quickly. Well, it's not the Father who's coming back to this earth; it's the Son. And my reward yeah. is with me to give one to eat everyone according to his work. Well, the Father's not going to judge people and give rewards. He's committed all judgment to the Son. That I think that's John five, round about verse twenty to twenty twenty two. Yeah. The Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. So clearly, yeah. verse twelve has to be about the Son, Jesus Christ. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of the last. The first and the last. Okay, yeah, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. We agreed first and the last applied to Jesus. Blessed are those who do his commandments, for they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside of the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and any everyone who practice a lie. I, Jesus, so this is the speaker, he identifies himself as I, Jesus. So there's no change in context for verse from verse 12 to verse 16. The speaker is the same right. person, it's Jesus. And Jesus, mm -hmm. you agreed, is the first and the last, yeah? Yes, he's referred to in that way. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to need to agree to differ on this yeah. one, Robert. Um, and but, uh, beginning, is, beginning is RK in that particular verse. Um, Revelation twenty two thirteen beginning and end that phrase the word beginning is RK. When you then go to the final verse, you go back to Revelation one. We find that the Almighty God is the beginning and the ending, the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. So I read from verse seven. Behold, He is coming with clouds, and every eye will see Him. Well, that's not the Father; that's the Son. And they also who pierced him, it was the son who was pierced, not the father. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so are men. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, who is to come, right? Well, is to come refers back to he who's coming in verse 7, the Almighty. So the Almighty God is Alpha and Omega, but in Revelation twenty two thirteen, the Alpha and the Omega is the first and the last, and then in Revelation one seventeen and eighteen, the first and the last is Jesus. So Jesus has to be Almighty God. Okay, mm. no, that's not the way we understand it actually. Um, so, thanks for your research Thank on these you. things, Robert. Thank um, you. If you'd like to talk again, because I am working through your book, Into Your Life Forever, I'd just send me a text and I'd be happy to. Just give me yeah. plenty of notice for our text. It would be nice to speak okay. to you again, James. Yeah, okay, Robert. And uh, uh, I mentioned in the, one of the texts that, uh, about you getting in touch with the witnesses locally, simply because the Kingdom Halls are now open again. So, you know, your, your local witnesses are the best ones to, to, to speak to, you know, to face to face. You um, know, those of the Kingdom Hall. I, I uh, don't have a car. And even if I no. did, I wouldn't go because I don't go to religious meetings. As I told you, I gave up in 2010. Right. If I were to go anywhere, it would be to, well, I guess an evangelical church. Uh, right. Because that would be closer to my faith than Jehovah's Witnesses. But I okay. don't have a car. Uh, I'm no, in poor okay. health. Why should I walk for what would probably be about two hours to get there and two hours to walk back? Mm -hmm. um, when I'm not a Jehovah's Witness and I don't share your faith, I, mean, no. I do want to be no. respectful to you, sir. Um, mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But I'd be happy to talk again. The witness is local to me. Many of them mm. don't answer the phone. And many of them, frankly, right. aren't very helpful. They told me, go to jw.org and do some research. And I actually okay. spoke to them, uh, I think it was two or three days ago. I went up to a cart. 
um, I held up my hands like a person surrendering, like a soldier surrendering to show them I didn't have a camera on me because I know they don't like people with cameras or mobile phones. So I had no camera and I talked to them and I said, hello, it's nice to see you, hope you're keeping well. But the moment I tried to talk about the Bible, they just turned their backs on me. So they're not there to talk about the Bible. They want to stand beside the cart and talk to themselves, really. But they're not really there to talk to the public and have a, a, a deep discussion about Scripture, unfortunately. Um, I'm not saying there aren't well-meaning and well-intentioned and sincere people in the Jehovah's Witness, because I think there are some very genuine and sincere people amongst them. But on the whole, uh, I found that the local witnesses to me really don't want to discuss the Bible. They want, they're want. they looking for people who, who agree with them and who they can, can convert pretty quickly. But they don't want anyone like myself who perhaps asks a few difficult questions. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah. what, what, um, what, when you read chapter 15 of the Enjoy Life forever book, is there, uh, is there anything in there that you find? An, that, an, uh, an, an, you another know, time. Oh, I'm, oh. Very, I'm very tired. I prefer to do one topic at a time. The only yeah. thing that interests me in chapter 15 is paragraph 3, which says Jesus was resurrected as a spirit. Now, I believe Jesus was resurrected in the same body that he died in. I do not wish to discuss it now. But if you wish to discuss it another time with me, don't voicemail me. Send me a text. I can never speak on a Monday. Any other time is fine, provided you give me lots and lots of notice by text, like a day or even two or three days would be better. Yeah. Give me an exact time by, by text. Yeah, OK, Robert. That's fine. Thank you very much. Nice well, to speak to you. Lovely speaking to you, and um, yeah. I hope you get better soon. And uh, I would yeah. suggest it's not a cure for COVID, but mm -hmm. it helps. It might help boost your immune, vit vitamin C, mm -hmm. vitamin D3, and some zinc mm -hmm. tablets. I take those every day, and uh, right. I hope that that helps you, and I do pray you get better yeah. soon. Thank you very much for your kindness. Thank Thanks, you. Robert. Thank you. Love to speak to you, sir. Bye-bye, James. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.